What's up, everyone, and welcome to Coffee with Ola. As you can see, I'm sitting here with my headphones on, and uh, obviously there's uh, you know a pandemic happening. I got my coffee, and I also got my good man Keith Merrow, the man of many, many riffs. What's up, Keith? Yo, what's up? I've always wanted to do this. What's up, everybody? So now, <laughs> now I've I officially clapped and opened your channel. It it actually didn't feel that great, but oh, sorry. You know. Sorry to let uh, to be, uh, be a disappointment. We're in a weird uh, times right now, where uh, basically we're socially distancing ourselves. Uh, how's your uh, How's your pandemic? My pandemic. Well, you know, you've probably heard a lot of musicians say it, but you feel like you're kind of built for this, like you're designed yes. to be stuck inside, exactly. designed to be isolated and work on your own. So that part of it's okay. Yeah. For me, it's been the exact same. Like usual with the it's pandemic. kind of business as usual. Yeah, yeah. The only difference is, is I've had to uh, cancel just about everything that I had planned for the whole year. Oh, okay. That was uh, international stuff, clinic stuff, um, any kind of performance. Yeah. You know, overseas, all that stuff got canceled. So I'm just kind of trying to figure out what to do now. So lately, I've just been doing a lot of extra curricular kind of outside activities outside of my own music just been doing um mix work reamp work uh building uh studio computers for friends oh stuff like that um just trying to keep busy trying to stay sharp but do you uh, do you tough, uh, so you do reamping and mixing for other bands yeah okay yeah o occasionally it's not something that i i do very often but sometimes i just feel like doing it yeah you know it's it's fun to run di's through amps and so i'm not gonna tones. i'm not gonna say that reach out to keith if you want to get some reamping done because in reality yeah, you could okay reach out to keep yeah, if you, you want you to get could, some but I, done. <laughs> yeah right now like i i opened it up like about a month ago and mm -hmm. and i've i've booked pretty much the entire month just with reamp and and mix jobs so yeah um, I might be able to take on more, but it'll be a little while before I can. So okay. So what's your go-to amplifier yes, for reamping? Oh wow. Okay. Well, it seems like people come to me with with a specific type of sound in mind that they want. Mm -hmm. You know, they want kind of like a modern metal sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, is nine times out of ten, I end up getting it out of a fifty-one fifty amp from nineteen ninety-four. Yeah. And that's that's the least modern amp I probably have here, but it's it's the one that gets the job done. So I tend to use that a lot. Um, one I just did recently that sounded really good was uh, it was a mixture of a 5150 with a PRS Archon. Oh, which yes. I thought sounded really great. Yeah, that that's a really underrated amp in my opinion. Yes. So. Usually I I actually have you tried the MT15 Mark Tremonti? No, but it's that a thing, smaller amp. I, I've seen, like, it's 15 yeah, yeah. watts. Uh, it's one of those amplifiers I recommend to uh, people that want a smaller tube amplifier nowadays because they're really like inexpensive as well for what you get. Yeah. And uh, they're really, they're just, you plug it in, it's done. It's like, it's, it's yeah. just a really it's, it's good and It's kind of interesting sound. that it would, yeah, it's kind of interesting that something like that would come from a, a guitar company as well. Yes. Like PRS amps. Exactly. And I, I think it, it first, a lot of people just kind of discounted it, but yeah. have you ever played with an Archon? I did, yeah. Or you, yeah, you played with the uh, the Mark Tremonti head. Yeah. I mean, the quality is insane. Yes, exactly. So they know how to make an amp, that's for sure. Yeah. So, you actually yeah, had, so a, you actually had a really good name for uh, this show, uh, COVID with Ola. COVID with Ola. Yeah, I think this is I'm, definitely a unique situation. Yes, I think we need to <laughs> uh, just rename this uh, throughout this whole pandemic, whenever it ends. Uh, Whenever I, it ends, man. yeah, I have no idea. We're, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, like where where you started with YouTube because usually when I when when people you know when a lot of people mention me, they they mention you in some way. I think there's really? a connection. We started about the same time on YouTube uh, on each you know uh, on the other side of the world doing you know our metal thing and you know playing songs and eventually we also did you know amp demos and you know we did the demos and all that and uh whenever someone said ola they always said keith and so on so you know you always had that youtube background just like me and um how did you start with your 
whole YouTube thing. What, why did you put up songs in the first place? Because I think the first videos that you have are basically your songs and like playthroughs, right? They're just songs, yeah. Well, I, I actually never intended on doing anything with YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I never intended to be a, a gear demo guy or do anything like that. Uh, when I first came onto YouTube, it was just sort of like an experiment. Uh, I had been writing songs that I'd been sharing with friends and family and just writing stuff for myself. You know, I'd come home from work, I'd sit down and I'd, I'd start working on songs. And a uh, buddy of mine came over one day and he was borrowing something from me. We were digging through my closet and I was playing him a couple of my songs. And he said, man, you know, this, this stuff is pretty insane. I think people would like it. You should put it on this new thing called YouTube. Mm. And that's back when, you know, YouTube still had the little star rating and it was, it was old. It was, <laughs> this is like, this must have been late 2007, early 2008, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, no, you know, I don't really want to be that guy that sits on my bed and has everybody telling me sucks a guitar. <laughs> uh, you know, it, but I started thinking about it and I'm like, you know, what could it hurt? I don't have anything else to do. This is just like a hobby of mine and I, I enjoy it and I'm passionate about it. Why not? So yeah. I, I took this old DV camcorder and I pulled it out of the closet, blew the dust out of it and plugged it in and just played through some of my songs, put them on the internet and within, uh, you know, a couple months, it started to snowball a little bit and people started asking where they could download and buy the songs, where they could, uh, you know, hear more if I was going to continue doing the YouTube stuff. And it got really motivating. It got really encouraging right. to see that people were into it. And it's something that people were looking forward to. And, and that was exciting to me because it gave me sort of a purpose for, uh, uh, for, for doing it more frequently. Yeah. Um, but you know, over time it, it changed things change and, I, and it did for you too. I mean, obviously yeah. you sort of jump on this path and then you ride it and, and see where it leads. And for me, it led to uh, doing gear demos and getting hired by Seymour Duncan. Yes. Um, you know, any, anyone who, who's followed me is probably pretty familiar with that story. Uh, I was in college going for multimedia degree, audio video production and ended up uh, getting hired out of college by Seymour Duncan to do their whole audio video network, really, across their uh, all their social media, doing all the sound samples and demo work for their website, uh, things like that. So I think, okay, I, just a little, a little side note. Uh, yep. I think I brought you to that Seymour Duncan VIP party, the first NAM. Indeed you did, where, it's actually where we, where we slept in the same room for the full week, yep. didn't we? Uh, so uh, maybe I had Same a little something, even. something up in that alley right there. <laughs> but uh, you know, so, it, so it, it's actually your fault, yeah, because I remember you introduced me to, to uh, Scott over there. Yes, exactly. And they they were like, "Oh, so you do stuff on YouTube? That's cool. Mm. Let let me get your number." And yeah. they emailed me after Nam. They're like, "You want to try out some products?" And then I started doing videos with those products because those videos were. Uh, college projects. Yes. They were basically multimedia projects for the work I was doing in school. So like those pickup shootouts, um, things like that. Those those were actually college projects that turned into uh, basically a job for mm -hmm. me with, with Seymour Duncan. They created a job. I was their first uh, remote employee. So mm -hmm. the first person to work outside the building. Um, I bet you everybody there is working outside the building now. Yes. You know, most likely it's COVID. That's, yes, that's how it is in 2020, man. Yeah, got to so, stay out of the buildings. So going back to this, this first nine was it 2012? I think it was 2012, where we uh, we went. Uh, I went to Nam for the first time. That's I, I think that that time was basically. Uh, I was still having a day job, you know, I was working as an accountant, you know, I went to NAM, and that's where I kind of decided like, okay, shit, I need to kind of push this. And I think it's also right. where we uh, met the first time. I mean, obviously, we, we knew about each other. Uh, but you know, you, you don't really know anyone until you actually like actually meet them. And you know, you can sleep in the same room and you know, like really hang. So, have conversations about what we want to do with our lives and things like that. Yeah, we, we really stuff, did. Exactly. We had a blast. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a blast. That that trip was pretty fun, actually. I, I have a lot of fond memories of that one. Yeah. Uh, I remember 
you were still in that full blown like hunger YouTube mode. Yes. Yeah, I remember you you were editing videos at one oh, in the yeah. morning while everyone's sitting there drinking and shit. Yeah, I was like editing around a video with the camera day. all day. Yeah. Yeah. Every Holy day, fuck. man. I had, yeah. I would wake up and it, it's super early in the morning. I'm usually like an early riser, and yeah. and I I thought I was like motivated and determined to wake up early and get to work. I'd wake up and look over, and Ola's like already on his laptop at like five in the morning editing a video or uh, doing some kind of interaction with with followers or something. Always yeah. working on something, man. And I, I remember just being uh, inspired by that and seeing that because I I know back then we had a lot of talks about what we were doing and how a lot of the things we were doing were, were similar in a lot of ways. Yes. Uh, so it, it's just really cool to see how far you've taken that, yeah. um, you know, with the new studio and solar guitars and, yeah. uh, the community that you've built up. It's really a great thing, man. I'm, I'm super stoked and, and proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate you it. Know, as, as, as one of, as one of my older friends in, in this industry, I guess you could say in yeah. this, Game, I mean, that, that's you know, what I mean. W that's the good thing about Nam. It's like you know, you see each other every year, and you get to talk like, okay, how was your year? And you know, how, like, it, it felt like you and I had this understanding that not a lot of people had about about our position, like yeah, man. what we really wanted to do with ourselves. I mean, maybe you two wasn't the the prime reason for doing what we're doing you know we it, I, mm -hmm. I think both you and i were always more about the actual music and i remember us having a conversation i don't know how long it was but i remember we it was probably over like a denny's drunken denny's uh, session or something like that but we were talking <laughs> about uh i remember me saying you know and you agreeing like you know i don't want to be remembered as ola the youtube guy and, you know i just i just don't want to do this anymore this was a couple of years back and I yep. remember we were like, yeah, agreeing, like, fuck, man, we don't want to do this. And, you know, it, you know, it's all about the music, like really deep stuff. And then like a year later, I kind of uh, got back into the YouTube thing. And like, then I went balls out all yeah, in. Yeah, you ran with it. Yeah, you I ran, ran with, with it. it. I, I remember it was like a, there was like a turning point where I guess you were sort of not neglecting your YouTube. No. Uh, no, I, I, I had just, just joined The Haunted and we were touring. You know, yeah, you were bands. you were working, you were focusing more on music. Yeah. But yeah. I remember there was like a, a shift where all of a sudden you were focusing on it heavily and now it's become like your main thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, outside of solar guitars, it's like that's that's your your entire career. Uh, yeah, my much, day to day right? is, is YouTube, I guess. So yeah. uh, exactly. And and uh, for you, it's shifted a little bit. I mean, you're mainly about the music and, you know, mainly about, like I said, when we uh, when we started to have the discussion about having this interview, uh, I've run out of riffs, but you know I, ha I have drive. <laughs> but you have a lot of riffs. What what is your what well, is your trick to have a lot of riffs? Because I know this is a question I know a lot of people have, and I think I, I had this question as well on my Discord channel, or Discord server. How how do you? What is a good riff, and how do you how do you find it? Completely well, jumping off into something else, by the way. <laughs> no, no, that's totally fine, man. Uh, Riffs for me are kind of like miniature little journeys or stories, you know? It's almost like they have to have a reason. Uh, they have to have resolution. They have to have some kind of question that gets answered hmm. uh, within that. So, you know, usually riffs have multiple aspects to them for me, multiple parts. You know, there's going to be sort of like a, a call and response sort of thing. So the tail end of the riff is going to be slightly different than the first part of the riff because yes. it's sort of in response to that both melodically and phrase wise but i so, write everything in my head first okay uh, i've always done that I, I write almost entire songs and then i'll pick it up and try to figure it out on guitar or, or work with it and flesh it out that way but for the most part it it always just starts with an idea i have in my head mm. And then I'll pick up the guitar and start layering that and, and building a foundation for it. But there's really no set way that I do it. It's kind of different every time. Mm. Uh, but in terms of getting inspired for riffs and stuff like that, it's I just pick it up and start playing <laughs> and, yeah. and and hope something cool comes out. I mean, I wish there was some like grand scheme that, that went down to come up with riffs, but it, it's really just a matter of enjoying 
playing guitar and music and if you're having fun with it something cool will come out eventually yeah so but staying engaged and, and keeping keeping it interesting is always a challenge i yeah. think that's the bigger challenge writing a cool riff isn't necessarily a challenge it's, it's getting the inspiration to even sit down and try to do that um, so like like a riff like uh pillars of creation for instance okay like how i mean a lot of people they connect you that that's your riff basically i mean that's not a lie if i say that's that's your riff like everyone knows that riff they love that song they love that riff like when you wrote, wrote that i mean that was early in your sort of you know youtube and music career you know being decisive what you are right mm -hmm. now how do you i mean you're always going to be well, compared to that riff right probably yeah well thinking back on that particular piece of music i wrote that in 2006 i believe 2000 2006 or 2007 mm. and at the time i was just really working a lot and i could only get out music in the small amount of downtime that i had so i would write really uh kind of free form i would just pick up a guitar and i would just start playing it and hope something came out so i would write songs very quickly pillars of creation the whole song was written in a day mm. uh, there wasn't a whole lot of thought put into it it was just kind of a stream of consciousness sort yes. of uh, I, I had it in my head i was literally driving home from work it was like an hour and a half commute home from work and i I was listening to music in my head. I, mean, I was scoring my own thoughts, and, and that song just sort of came out of nowhere, and, and I just came home, wrote it, recorded it, and that's it. And now it's forever known as like the Seymour Duncan pickup demo song. Exactly. <laughs> Do you ever feel the pressure that you have to outdo this riff? No. I mean, not everything you write is going to be the best thing you've ever written. No. Sometimes you get lucky, and I, I just like to think that at some point, oh, cool, yeah, I will write something that I think is cooler than that and will resonate, and so maybe I'm holding out hope for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want to say that, you know, I've been sitting around trying to get work done all this time, and I wrote my best song in 2006. Like, yeah. what have I been doing since then? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> I think it, it, we, it, we usually have this discussion a lot in The Haunted, actually, is that... You know, obviously, when you're younger, you have more drive. You kind of, you know, you want, I mean, you mean things. <laughs> and, you know, you want to, yeah. you know, put music out there. And the older you get, it's like, uh, you just don't have the same drive anymore when it comes. Or like the same, you don't have the anger, you don't have the angst in the same way. I mean, both you and I have, you know, more stable lives and, you know, family life and all that and kids to worry about. And, and, uh, I think you get more complacent, right? Like you're a little hungrier when you're a little bit younger. Like yes. that. now, looking back on that, I mean, that was over a decade ago. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like it's hard to even think back on that because I feel like a different person. Yes. So much has happened since yes. then. And probably yeah. also like back then, you really wanted to impress on people. Like that was your you came from the bottom. You want to hit upwards. And now you don't really, I mean, the older you get, the less you care about what other people think. That's kind of like the formula yeah, for, for sure. a lot of people, I guess. So Yeah, well, now, now I don't really care. But back then, it was one of those, I, I would say that it came down to those early YouTube videos where people were asking where they could download the music. And mm -hmm. if I had more music available, it was kind of like, I, me thinking to myself, well, if they like that, then I know I can do better. I know yeah. I can do better than that, yeah. you know? And and so that's where Pillars of Creation and, and that album came from, was just sort of, I was motivated. I was a lot more motivated. Yeah. Um, not saying I'm not motivated now, it's just, I guess it's shifted a little bit. It's a little yes. bit of a different scenario. Um, so that was just full blow and having fun. I mean, and now there's there's more to it. So talking about your music, uh, now I'm talking about your personal music and your you just released an album, um, Reading the Bones. And the, the thing that I hear, and this is very common that you hear and goes in line with what we're talking about, you know, about being, you know, more hungry or driven when you're younger. But the newer material is more mature and, you know, okay. better, better in that way, if you understand what I'm saying. I mean, you can hear... Yeah. 
You can... It's that way hear you aging. <laughs> in a bit. <laughs> or like in a way. It's a weird way of, of, it, of yeah. giving a compliment, but that's what I mean. It's... Uh, it's uh, it's truly well, something. I, I mean, do you feel that you're more secure when writing a song now? Like you fall back more on that? Oh, uh, you know, I, I I think I know what I'm doing. You know, than I back think in so. The day. Well, I learned to trust myself more. I yeah. think uh, in the early days, you don't even know how to trust yourself. You don't know what's good. You don't know no. what's not good. You just you're just doing it because you're having a great time. Yes. And that that comes across in a very genuine and honest way through the music, I think. Yeah. Because it's imperfect, it's uh, it's dirty, it's grimy, it's sloppy. You know, there's a lot of inconsistencies in it, but to be able to look back on it and hear the growth of just having to have done the process so many times since then, it's cool to hear the growth. Yes. Uh, because after after you kind of get your foot in the door with that, you end up working a lot. You end up writing a lot of music. You end up spending a lot of time uh, dialing in guitar tones, dialing in mixes, things like that. So you grow a lot yeah. just from doing it. And uh, and I mean, you're I, not I the same person as go. you were like no, you know, 16 all. years ago. Yeah, exactly. Well, you get to travel the world and see all these cool places. And, and I mean, it's probably the same for you. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past 10 years, you've traveled more than you probably did your entire life up to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how it was for me. I, I got to see all these places that I never thought I would even be able to go. And knowing that guitar is the reason I'm there and, and my music is what took me there is, is probably the most rewarding thing on earth. Yes. Um, so I think you you develop a bit of a respect for what you're doing as well so when it comes to writing stuff these days i care more about it i think it, it's it's not i'd say that the, the passion and that that hunger that i had in the early days is different now mm. it's more just like i i respect it and i want to enjoy the process so i take my time with it um i really try to absorb it and get immersed in in the writing process um so like reading the bones, for example, I wrote that entire record for the most part, I believe the, the entire record was written while I was traveling. Mm. Uh, so I, I would be out doing a clinic or a show or something, and then we'd go have a nice dinner, go back to the hotel, and then I would write. And the reason I do that is because for me, having, having some sort of a reason for the music to exist. Mm. So when I look, listen back on some of those songs off of uh, the last record, I can draw straight lines to, okay, well, I was sitting in the yes. Middle East when I wrote that. Yeah. I was sitting in uh, Maui or something when I wrote that. And so it gives it meaning. It gives it, uh, it encapsulates like a, a time and place and a certain, uh, certain mood and vibe for me. Mm. And that's that's really what sparks my my writing is is that sort of thing. I, I like to uh, I like to sort of capture an emotion in an environment uh, when I write. So it's uh, it's incredibly difficult right now for me to get into that mode because I'm stuck at home. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it's like, oh, this is the perfect time to buckle down and woodshed and work yeah. on your guitar skills or yeah. write music. Yeah. And for me, I'm having a really hard time just getting inspired. Yeah. Uh, it, Cause it's, it's a different process for me. I, I could totally write sitting here in front of this, this studio desk and, yeah. uh, you know, get, get inspired and come up with some music, but it's just more enjoyable for me to actually uh, kind of put a stamp on it with a time and place. Yeah, uh, because it's like a snapshot of where you were at in your life at that given moment. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's cool to reflect on things like looking back on that Pillars of Creation song. It's like that was a totally different time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, when you talk about that, I can remember what I was doing. I remember when I was driving home writing that in my head. You know, so the music has to have some sort of connection uh, to a real life experience for me. Otherwise, it doesn't have any meaning. Um, so just writing out of thin air for the sake of, of having fun is, is great, but when you can actually uh, you know, connect it to your life, I think that gives it a lot more, a lot more personal value, a lot more integrity in, in your own music to do it that way. For sure, and I so mean, that's hear, how I do it. hearing that also makes it 
that's the, the, the hearing that and your explanation makes the riffs more intriguing also it makes this that's cool really gives it uh you know makes it more personal in some way now that you're telling me and i hope that will portray really well into the viewers as well yeah i think i think it doesn't directly translate but i think where your head's at when you're writing and, and recording that stuff that does translate yeah uh, there's there's kind of a jazzy song on there that's really kind of weird and out of place mm. that was written in a log cabin up in the forest without any phones or I internet remember, or anything. I uh, remember that you sent me a picture of your setup there. Yeah, like, oh, and full was, on riding mode, and it was like, whoa, the most coziest place ever. Yeah, maybe I'll send you a picture so you can uh, you can put it in the yes, video or whatever. You. But just just having vibes like that, it's there's nothing better yeah. for me. I live for that. Yeah. So. Um, and I, I'm starting to embrace that more and more now that I get older, mm. because it, you start thinking about, well, how many opportunities am, am I going to have to do this process yeah. before it's a totally meaningless process and doesn't matter to anybody. So yeah. now I, I look forward to making some sort of excursion for writing music or um, oh, that, so after all this vacation, ends, maybe like a tour, yeah. like a writing tour. Yeah, man, absolutely. Just get out and. Go sit at the beach and write music or something. I don't That's know. That's cool. That's cool. So get out of this cave that I've been in for months. <laughs> <laughs> and you just play video games and I recognize this yeah. a, a lot actually. Like for me now uh, during this pandemic, for some reason I started playing a lot more video games at office hours. Oh man, it's it's not. Dude, it's a I problem. am playing so. It, it's ridiculous how many video games I'm I'm playing right now. And oh my god. Okay. I'm kind of ashamed of it because I could be using the time to do <laughs> yeah, more productive things. I know. <laughs> I have a question from a server member from my Discord. He's asking if you still play Guild Wars. Oh, no. I haven't played that in years. But actually, I thought about playing it recently because <laughs> the hell else am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's even no, worse I'm, when you I'm, go back to one of those games you were really stuck in for a while. Like, go, go back yeah, to play Diablo like, 2. It's like, okay, buy life. I remember wasting my life. Well, let's waste my life again because I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> now, um, I'm actually playing Warframe a lot right now. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, people kept telling me to check it out because there's a level on there named Marrow. <laughs> oh, really? And they think that, they think that someone there was Inspired? had some sort of inspiration or something. And I'm like, I don't know. But it, it's probably not related at all but i thought it was cool so i checked the game out and i loved it so that's cool been jamming it so jamming uh it. i want to get back into the music a little bit uh conquering dystopia uh, yep. was a huge success when uh, that whole like super group came out in uh, was it 2013 or 12 13. uh that album yeah we started that project in 2012 and i think the album came out in 2013. yes exactly yeah and um I mean, it's Jeff Loomis, it's Alex Webster, it's you, and uh, don't remember the name because I'm an asshole. Uh, drummer. Rudy. Rudy, yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, are we going to see any more Conquering Dystopia coming? or is that I a really secret? hope so, man. Yeah. Well, it's not a secret. We, we, have, we have plans to do more. Mm. We've been trying to get together and and make something happen for a while we do have a couple new songs that we've uh, put together since the last record but it's such a slow going process mm. uh, everybody in the band is obviously in another working band yeah and so they're busy all the time and just to get all of us focused on the same task for even <coughs> a, a week is like a really really challenging <coughs> thing so it's all the moment. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I got a <coughs> fucking cock in my throat. Edit. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> no, but it's also, you know, at times like these, where, I mean, musicians have uh, has to kind of scruff for money. I mean, yeah. they have to focus on the, the things that, that make them money. So, obviously, like, projects like this, it's, it's harder and harder to kind of keep an honest focus on something like this especially during a pandemic well it, yeah it's it's impossible right now because jeff and i found out on the last that first record we did that uh, we have to write in the same room we have to be sitting okay a, across from each other trading ideas trading riffs yeah. um 
Like that, the whole process for the first record, we were in a small bedroom, basically back to back. I would be writing riffs on one side of the room. Jeff would be on the other side working out lead lines to some of the, the progressions and ideas that I was coming up with. Mm. And we just did that until we had an entire album. Mm. Uh, and it, it worked so f so effortlessly that yeah. I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. So it's possible that we could write some stuff over Skype or the internet, but I just find that there's just such a disconnect with that. Yeah. Kind of like how there's a disconnect on this. Like, yeah. I'm sure if we were sitting in the same room and, and talking to each other, it would just be a totally different vibe. Exactly, and that's why I kind of we're doing that's what. That's why I kind of people always say like you should do more Skype coffee with Olas. That I don't want to do that in reality because I want a connection face to face, like you said. I mean, yeah, there's so, th there is an an absolute disconnect <laughs> between this happening right now because you know I hear you with a phone voice. And you hear me in a phone yep. voice, and it's like it's, we're sitting talking. And then you hear yourself back like a second later, and you're confused. Exactly. And, yeah, and it's, it's awkward weird silences, weird and thing. we talk in, in uh, at the same time, and it's you know it's <laughs> it's it's weird. But yeah, I totally understand what you're saying there. Uh, yeah. The well, you, we, we do the best we can with this whole internet thing. Okay. The so, internet. What but, even is it? Uh, you're also in a new band, Nightmare. That. Uh, you, I, I, all I can see from the nightmare is that you you had a you had such a good picture of your studio. Uh, don't remember how, when it was like a year ago or something like that. But it's basically the whole studio was cluttered with people and drums <laughs> and and amps and everything. And it was like, whoa, what the hell just happened? So, dude, we obliterate this place when when <laughs> we get projects going in here. We tear it up. We have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it was like that for Nightmare. Uh, I've, I've done some video work for uh, like the Vitriol guys were here doing video work. Right. Uh, we did an entire video with drums and lighting and fog machines and yeah. everything in the studio. And in order to do that, you have to turn the whole place upside down. Yeah. So uh, that's kind of what I, I love doing that. I love destroying my studio and then you got to clean it up like a week later and yeah. it takes you half a day. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, uh, are you writing with uh, Nightmare as well? Indeed. Okay, yes, and you're going to release an album soon. Yeah, we, uh, we're actually done writing the whole next record. Uh, we have drums recorded for it. Uh, basically, the only thing we're waiting on now is uh, final tracking of guitars and vocal production. Mm. Uh, then, of course, mix and master, but we're... Uh, we should have been completely done with it by now, but we got postponed on the vocal recordings because who's gonna who's gonna want to sit there while someone's screaming into a microphone right now, right behind right. them, you know? So, right. Um, but we're hoping for we're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do because we had some festivals and things uh, planned for Europe later in the year yeah. that got canceled, so we might try to release the album. Sometime around when we're going to be playing shows, I, so I don't know if we're going to postpone it or if we're still going to try to release it in the fall. But okay. uh, there's definitely going to be a new Nightmare album for I sure. I must say that, uh, like music-wise, it it's so it fits you so well. I mean, this is, <laughs> is basically right? what I, like That's this good. is the band like you should be in. That's where That's I, when, I, when well, I hear the music, that's like okay, this is so Keith. And when I hear, I, I obviously hear in the, there's a single out that I've been listening a lot to. Yeah. And, you know, I, I hear you like all over it, even if it, if the, it's not instrumental, like the right. regular way we're used to hearing Keith, uh, but it, it fits you so well. And, you know, this, this dissonance and, you know, it's just, a, it's the perfect band, uh, in my opinion, to have you in it. Well, when I first, well, thanks, man. When I first heard Nightmare, I was I was stoked. I was like, wow, this is killer. Like, this is this is some stuff that I would enjoy writing and that that I probably would write. Mm. And it came it came down to uh, just meeting up with with the guys and, and talking with them. And they they were looking for another guitar player. And I have been wanting a project where I can throw like my darkest, most messed up ideas. Mm. Uh, that's a nightmare for me. That's my my solo music is more like a melodic, dark thing that has yeah. resolution, kind of cinematic. Um, Conquering dystopia is is what it is. I, I don't even really know how to describe that one, other than shred. 
Yeah. But then you have uh, Nightmare, which is more of just like an atonal, uh, not afraid to get dirty and ignorant at all, it, just for the sake of just making something crushing. And, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, that single that we just released it has has some unusual things about it when it comes to my writing and playing. And I think the cool thing is is a full collaboration like that always yields different results. Yeah. Uh, you know, than if you write something yourself. So, for example, that song, I, I believe it's in F sharp, low mm. F sharp. So it's super low tuned, but we never hit that low that low F sharp. Uh, there's no, there's not a single palm mute in the whole song. So, will it chug? No, it no. won't. It, it won't. It will never will chug. chug. That song does not chug. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I failed that test. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's meant to be more of like an open kind of wall of sound sort of thing. So we wanted to play it wide open. It's real bendy. Um, yeah, and we wrote that in an evening. And, and it just came out very naturally. So that's that's pretty much how the rest of the music on the album came out as well. So I'm, ex cool. I'm excited to get it out there. I think it's going to be uh, something a little different than, than people would expect to hear from, from my camp i guess yeah. but um you know if you like kind of black metal-y death metal-y <laughs> dissonant music that has vocals on it and maybe you'll like it that's cool so we'll find out yeah i want to get into the guitars a little bit so both you and i started with having like signature guitars which is fucking weird to have a sing like why would someone want to have a signature guitar with a bunch of noobs like keith and, and ola YouTube uh, we, guys. Yeah. <laughs> some random fucking dudes. Uh, we had uh, Strictly 7 signature guitars. And, um, oh, man. That's kind of like how... That's, we, we, that's why we shared a room, by the way. We're both artists of Strictly 7 guitars. That's right. So, so, that's right. We were there on behalf of Strictly 7 guitars. Yes. And now, today, you have the Schecter Keith Merrow guitar, which is basically... Has it been like the most selling signature guitar of their... Uh, of their their brand history, basically, it's been an incredible. Yeah, success. believe it or not. Yeah, believe it or not, it's it's super crazy. I, I never expected that it would do as well as it has, but yeah, it's uh, it's a big one for them. And we're on our third generation that I have of here. That guitar, the oh yeah, you have, I have it here. So I, I yeah, reached out yeah. to Keith, uh, and they sent me one so I could make a rigged week. Of it, and uh, you probably already saw it. It's uh, it was uploaded a couple of days ago, and uh, I just want to say, like, what I truly enjoy from the first Keith Merrow because they they have changed. Like the uh, the Keith Merrow guitar has changed, but from yeah. the absolute start of uh, your collaboration, what I really truly enjoyed about your shape and uh, the uh, the guitars in general is just the uh, the absolute smallest attention to detail, like. The smallest, like, I don't mm -hmm. know if you can, see, you can see this. I'm trying to show to the camera. But, like, the inlays, I fucking yeah, love that. Like, the, the black center dot and that, that framing. And uh, just, like, the... It, it's just, like... It's a, such a perfect packaged guitar. Like, this is... Well, we wanted it to look as good as it plays and sounds. Yes. Uh, in my... From my journey with Schecter... To arrive at that Mark III, in in my opinion, now it's actually a signature guitar. Yes. Uh, the first two models, uh, well, I guess the first model, it started out as, okay, here's the options you have. You yes. pick the body, you pick the headstock, you pick the neck. Very common And then you pick your guitar. specs. And yeah, yeah basically you, you pick from the lineup of, of current production models they already have, and then yes. you customize them the way that you want them. So that's what the original one was. I guess I just got really lucky and picked specs that people actually liked and <laughs> wanted to use, mm. and that's why it did well. Uh, the second gen, uh, the Mark II guitar, that was uh, a little bit more of a collaboration. It, it has a unique body, um, but it's still based off of one of their other models. We yep. just kind of changed some of the beveling and things like that. But when it came to the Mark III, I actually got to design it in the USA custom shop, like draw it on paper and uh, work with John over there in the custom shop to actually program the lines and, and get it all geometrically correct. Uh, 
and it, it ended up being a, a completely fresh design from from nothing yeah uh so now it actually is a signature guitar like the the design is from my mind it's my body shape my headstock shape i hand shaped the neck myself oh, in the shit. the uh custom shop so it's even my own neck profile i, I got really really involved on on the uh the design of that third Mark III guitar. It's, right. it's more of like a, uh, I, I, I guess I proved to them that they could take a little bit more of a risk. Uh, okay, yeah. They can make a brand new guitar and, and trust that it'll probably do okay. They could and, probably and has, trust so. you because uh, obviously you've shown the record. Like you have a, I mean, you have such a huge uh, reputation and you know that your word means a lot to people and you sold them a bunch of guitars you could probably you know you, you should be able to design whatever you want basically and they would know that you would yeah. put a do a really really good job and that's what right. i think you've well, done and, right here i mean th this it's so sleek too i mean the the lines is, uh, are just somewhat somewhat yeah, reminds it, me man. of like you know the sleekness of an uh, ibanez s you know do you remember those it's yeah well i actually uh in in some people pointed it out pretty much right away but i uh i have some old uh rico guitars right some bernie, bernie rico. rico guitars and uh i designed one with him years and years ago mm. and it was one of my main guitars so it's sort of loosely based on that okay uh, but it's it's it is quite different but it's sort of that was the inspiration for it to start out yeah so cool yeah. and also the uh you have the fishman keith Merrow pickups as well from uh, yep. Are yep. they fluence or are they something else? Yeah, they're fluence. Uh, they're uh, they're sort of a different beast than all their other pickups that they currently offer. Mm -hmm. um, they're not as hot as like the moderns. Yeah, uh, maybe a little hotter than the classics, but they're a very modern sounding pickup. Mm -hmm. um, they're an Alnico pickup that sounds more like a ceramic. Yeah, gotcha. Um, they were. Like, I, I listened to them the other day in, in your live stream, and I noticed that they have a, a lot more top-end content, I guess. Like, they let a lot more of the top end of the guitar through mm. than, like, a uh, a warmer passive pickup. Yeah. At least through that Marshall that you had there. That Marshall, that Marshall like, is... Uh, that was a, yeah, that, that thing that, is bright as hell. <laughs> yes. But I listened so back bright. to... I mean, that's the problem with a live stream. It's, you know, it's live. So you have no idea yeah. how the microphone will sound. I mean, you have to put your ear on the fucking cab. And the the, uh, right. the cabinet that I was using, this Fortin, it needs to be... It, it's not even been uh, properly broken in yet. So, I mean, some of that gotcha. shrill comes from the speakers of that uh, cabinet. But uh, I don't think it was the best match, probably, with the no. JCM 800. But as... Uh, like with the PV5150 that I had, it was like, it was plug and play. I even brought like a, when I did the video for that, I took out like an overdrive. Like, you know, you would, like when you get a 5150, yeah. you would get an overdrive. And I never used it. That was the best part about yeah. it. I, I just plugged it in. It's like fucking well, hell, it, it should be plug and play. Yeah, it should be plug and play with a rig like that because that's basically what it was voiced on. Yeah. Uh, it was a 5150 and an oversized cabinet. Um, we went through a lot of different rigs, but at the end of the day, my main rig is a 5150. So yeah. that's, you know, it's going to play really well with that sort of amp for sure. That's awesome. Uh, I just want to yeah, extend a huge congrats to all of this. This is, uh, this is insane. And it also makes me very proud about you and, uh, you know, well, man, you're crushing it. Well, we're, yeah, we're crushing you, it on man. our both, a... on our both ends. So I, I, I mean, I, I think we're, you know, I'm proud about you. You're you, proud about me. And next, hopefully well, dude, we meet again next time guitars. so we can go out and try and get through, a, you know, drive through in and out middle of the night. <laughs> uh, again, yeah. <laughs> Walk like four that. miles to find to find hash browns and pancakes. Exactly. So um, <laughs> I just want to finish off with with a um, a couple of questions about you know the approach of uh, how you work right now because obviously you spend a lot of times in your studio and your home environment and uh, what do you what do you consider being the the pros and cons working like we are doing right now I mean basically you and I are both bedroom musicians that kind of gone went from bedroom to live stage basically but this yeah. right here what you're having right there that this is your main environment 
and uh, where you work. Like, what what is the what are the pros and the cons of working like we are right now? Well, the pros are you have all the freedom and control over your situation that you would ever need. Yeah. Uh, the cons are you have control over everything and you get used to that. Yes. And so when you go to work with other people, it makes it a little bit different because your process could be something completely different than what someone else is used to. So mm. it makes collaborations for me a little bit more difficult because I get so kind of into what I'm doing that yeah. I get fixated on the way that I want to do it. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't always work for everybody, but I, I find that things like joining Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, I had Simon, the other guitar player here, had him here a couple times for you know a week at a time to, to write music, and I really enjoy that back and forth interaction of yeah. just being creative and and trying to make music out of nothing, out of thin air. I really really enjoy doing that. So I guess a con would be, you end up missing that a lot if you work alone or you primarily have like some kind of solo project or something that you're always working on, mm. you get a little bit disconnected. Um, but then again, the pros are you're completely invested in, in your own craft yep. and you find ways to uh, kind of expand on that. And that's what I do now is I, I just basically try to enjoy every aspect of it because we're in a very fortunate position. Things could be much, much worse yep. <laughs> for both of us. And, and I'd say that we're extremely fortunate. So I just try to enjoy it, man. I just yeah. try to love it and appreciate it, especially now. Uh, even in the early days, it, you get so caught up in the hustle and trying to trying to actually make a name for yourself or do something mm -hmm. uh, that gets people's attention that you sort of forget to enjoy it. Yeah. You forget to, to love it. And, and I'd say that that's the thing that's changed the most over time is now, I, dude, I don't want to stress about anything. I don't want to. I don't want drama. Yeah. I just want to love music and and make it. <laughs> I just want to make music. That's I think I that. Do. I mean, when you've been you, when you've been in this for a while, that's when you can you can reflect on things. And it's like just as you said, uh, you know, back in the day when we were at NAM, you know, like you said, hustling and you know, you're trying to get the content out there. You know, you know, be on top of things, being trying to be the best one. It's nice to go back and, you know, just do what you want to enjoy. And I think, like, yeah. for me, obviously, like, Solar Guitars has, has helped me to let go of a lot of things. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to hustle. I don't have to, I don't have the same pressure. So uh, just like with you and Schechter, I mean, kind of, you can, you can relax a lot more. And I think at the yes. end of the day, it's just, you're happier. Your family is happier because you're, you're a, probably a better person. And, uh, you know, it's just, I think we're so, like you said, we're so fortunate to be able to do this. And now that we've done it for a while, I think it's easier for us to appreciate what we have and what we've had. And it's, uh, it's just, I think still to this day that you're probably the closest guy that I can relate with regarding this. I mean, we're basically sitting on each end yeah. of the world doing the exact same thing. And, uh, yeah, we've talked about it for years. Yes. I, you've, you've always been the Swedish version of me. And, exactly. <laughs> you know, and I've, I've been, uh, I've been the American Ola since yeah, 2008. So exactly. Yeah. We got a lot in common and, and it's really rewarding to, to see the journey. Uh, yes. Just to see how far you've come. I, I got to get out there to Sweden and check out that new studio, man. It looks amazing. Yes. You're invited anytime because I've been Congrats to your studio. On that. I, I was actually yeah. in your old house, and we recorded Generic yeah, Eric. Yeah, when it was when it was actually a bedroom. Oh, yes. Generic Eric! Oh my God! I'm getting a lot of, of people asking, "When's the next Generic Eric coming?" <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. We're gonna Let's do it. We're gonna two. do something at least. Okay. Yeah, we should. We should. It's been too long. Yes, for sure. So that's gonna wrap things up. Keith, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure, and. Uh, it, it, I'm just really happy to talk to you. I, I think I speak for a lot of people saying that, I mean, you're doing a lot of music, but you should definitely try and do more videos because whenever you I do know, come out with videos, it's, it, it's just next level. That's what I always liked about your stuff is that you said you well, went thanks, to college man. for this because when you do a video, it's telling a story. 
when I do a video, I just push record and switch cameras, and that's kind of like the technicality <laughs> of it. But you have a story to tell with all your videos, and it just it really pulls you in. And I, I think I speak for a lot of people saying that we, we all miss you on YouTube a little well, bit. Well, that's, that's awesome. I, the, one of the main reasons I don't do it more is just because I guess I sort of set the standard a little bit too yes. high for myself. Yeah. And to do all of that yourself, just to get one of those videos out, even one of them a week, mm. is a pretty big undertaking for one guy. And I know you know all about that. Yes. Um, when you're trying to do other things, it's it's very difficult to switch gears and, and focus on that. Because doing video production is a completely different thing yeah. than when you're trying to be creative and make music or um, you got to wear a lot of different hats. And I admire you for uh, finding a way to sort of streamline your workflow so you mm -hmm. could pump out content like that. Mm. I, I wish I could. I wish I could, man. Like, I, I want to find a way to, uh, I, I guess, make more content easier for people, uh, easier for myself, just yeah. to get stuff out there that people enjoy. But I don't want to shit post. No. You know, I don't want to just put out garbs. No. You know, I want to make, I want to make stuff that I can look look back at and and be proud of, or at least say it's mostly the best I could do. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I give people that advice all the time. If you're going to put something on the internet, make sure you can step back and tell yourself it's the best you could do right now. Um, I think that's an important thing if you want to try to stand out or go anywhere, um, or even maintain what you've what you've built. Yeah. You've got to keep that keep that quality consistent. So. You got you got it all ironed out, dude. I, I'm super stoked every time you post a video because I know it's it's not going to suck. <laughs> it's going to be good. Thank you so much. That really means a lot coming from you as well. It's thank we got to do more of these, man, because there's just way more than there than are. We have to revisit can, this uh, type of coffee, and uh, we're going to talk more about in depth about what what has yes. happened throughout the years because there's a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about. Yes, indeed but there is. I I got lots of stories for you. <laughs> awesome. Keith, thank you so much for being on my show and uh, best of luck to you and uh, all the best wishes to your family as well. And uh, yeah, stay safe, stay, stay, stay sane. healthy and happy. I wish. Wash your hands. <laughs> I don't Wash know about ass. that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, just take care, man. I love you. Yeah, I love you too, man. Wash your dick in the sink. Peace. <laughs>